Hello. Today we're going to talk about executing a simple query using PDO. So in my previous video I showed you how to create a connect script. That's definitely where you want to start. I'll be honest, I uh, couldn't figure out how to link to a video in the beginning. But uh, it exists, I'm telling you that. I, I can see I can link to it at the end, but if you don't know how to create a connect script, uh, check out my video on that. It's relatively short and sweet it'll get you to this point. So that's a connect script. So there's a couple ways that you can interact with a database in PDO. We're going to talk about the simple one today, which is the query method. Uh, this is used for when your query doesn't have any variables in it. I think you're going to be more interested in prepared statements, and I will make a video on that as well. Uh, but in this one, I'm just going to show you what a query looks like. So let's say we want to do something like uh, just select star from a table. There's no nowhere. Let me show you what that table looks like. So I'm looking at this table. It's called hitters. Let's get familiar with it. All lowercase. All the fields are all uppercase except you name. I'm just going to pull the names. So name is all uppercase. Name of the table is all lowercase. All right. So when we're talking about querying. The first thing we're going to do is write a uh, write some SQL. If you don't know SQL, this isn't going to go well. That being said, I think uh, getting started with SQL is actually pretty easy. I think at least in my opinion, because you don't have to do complex things like joins and unions. You can just do stuff like select star from hitters. That right there, that's a query. And notice there's no variables. Now, what I mean by variables would be something like this, where name equals, you know, some variable like, uh, you know, search. I, I don't know. But my point is, when you allow users to put variables into your queries, you're you're opening yourself up to something called a SQL injection attack. And ultimately, you should be concerned about preventing those. But there are times like this where there are no variables. So you don't need to do the preparation and the binding. You could even do something like this, where team equals uh, STL. You notice this is a query with a where clause, but there's no variables in it. So we don't really need to worry about a SQL injection attack. These are all good candidates for what I'm about to show you. All right, so if my SQL doesn't have variables in it, then this can be as simple as creating a variable called result. It's probably going to be, I don't know, sometimes I call it results, sometimes I call it results. If I, I know that I'm going to get a big set of stuff, so I kind of want to call it an S, but it's just a variable, so I'll, I won't. And uh, I'm going to use that connect script, and I'm going to call this query function. Now, you should use the query function if you can, because it's easy. You don't have to execute. You don't have to bind anything. You don't have to prepare anything. I just want to execute that query. Now, here's the problem with this. I'm telling you, I think this is going to work. And this is probably the first video that you're going to watch after your connect script. We don't know if it works. Uh, like, There's no way to tell without displaying the results. So this is where I get all torn up about this. Like I could end this video now because we're done, but I don't actually know if it worked. But yet again, I also want to make a video showing you how to display these results. So I'm going to kind of get ahead of myself and show you a way to dis display these results. And I'm not going to explain it very well. And in the video a couple down the road, I will show you how to do this and what your options look like. So I'm telling you, we just executed a query, but we don't know what it, what we got out of it. So if you want to do something with it, probably what I would want to do, the easiest thing I could do is make a while loop. This while loop is going to serve the purpose of iterating over that set of results that we got. And in, in my condition for my while loop, I'm going to also do a declaration of a variable. Right, I am not feeling too bad about just blowing through this because I know that I'm going to come back to it soon enough. So I, I guess I'll attempt to tell you what I just did. I know I'm not explaining things, but I, I will. All right. So I don't want to show you reviewing results because I'm trying to show you the simplest query I can show you, but it's not going to feel very good unless you can see the results. So basically, this is a loop here. This serves the purpose of iterating over that thing called result. This function right here fetches one row at a time. So this is basically saying, hey, fetch the fetch the first row, then fetch the second row, then fetch the third row. This right here is declaration and assignment of a variable. It keeps getting overwritten. It represents the current row. And then here I'm printing out the name field from that current row. Maybe that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. 
I'll dive in a little deeper. You do have other options with how you can uh, proceed here. So let's see what we get. I actually don't know. What we're, I don't even know if I wrote valid code. That looks like it's valid. I like what I'm seeing. Lance Berkman, Raphael Fercal. You can see Lance Berkman's the first one there, and he's a St. Louis, and there's, right? I have no reason to think that it doesn't work. So there are other ways you can display those results. I didn't really want to show you how to display your results, but as you can see, if I didn't have this, it would just be, oh, let's assume that this query worked and uh, you wouldn't know that it did. But now you know that it did. In the next video, I'll show you prepared statements. In the video after that, I'll show you your options for how you can display the results of your query. Thanks for watching.